Hello, welcome to the Extraordinary Asian Women, Real Women, Real Stories. It is where Asian women from all over the world share the stories and inspire you to take action. I'm Claudia Chen, your host. So our guest today is a dance and movement coach who guides women to live consciously and confidently using mindful movements and dance through her signature program, Moving Into Joy. She holds a BSc in kinesiology and has trained in various forms of dance, Muay Thai kickboxing, and yoga. She uses her experience in movement and a combination of mental and physical strategies to help her clients shift their thinking, reconnect with their intuition, and build their confidence. I'd like to introduce you to our guest, Wendy Ng. Hi, Wendy. Um, How are hi, you? Hi, Claudia. I'm so cold here today, but I'm so glad that we're here and chatting and this is going to be an amazing conversation. So thank you for having me. Yes, I know. So let us know who you are and where you're from. And that's why you're so cold. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am from Saskatchewan, Canada. So geographically in the middle of the country and we are under a polar vortex right now. So extremely cold winter, but it's going to warm up and this is fun to have this conversation with you and get to share um, my story with a bunch of other Asian women, because I think together, the more that we can pick each other up, the more we're going to achieve as a whole community. That is so awesome. Yes. And that's why we're doing this today. So we can get to share your story. So Wendy, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you did to bring you to where you are today. Yeah. So I am a mom of three little, little ones. And I'd say a couple of years ago, what happened is I was, I got married. I was just starting my family. I had two young kids. I was already a couple years into my career as an occupational therapist. And I, I have to say that, you know, I can look back at my life and see some points in time that really pushed me forward to change and be a better version of myself. And I would say motherhood was definitely one of those things. So I grew up as a really shy, introverted middle child with two sisters who I could rely on to like be my voice and, and go help advocate for me. And I really sat back and was more quiet. And what I found in motherhood is that I just like the lioness in me kind of developed, right? I all of a sudden found my voice and was more willing and propelled into needing to step up in my life to show up in a bigger way for my kids. And so there I was wanting to um, grow in a different direction, um, do things differently. And I was feeling kind of overwhelmed and stressed out and looking for help. So I came across a podcast and, um, and I started working with a coach because I wanted something different in my life. And so working with a coach really helped me change my mindset, the way I was thinking, um, and made me realize the things that I was doing up until that point were fine, but now I needed to do something different, think differently in order to achieve more in my life. And so fast forward after working with the coach, I decided to share the same, you know, the things that I had learned to help other busy moms achieve the same kind of spacious feeling, the same confidence to go after the things that I, you know, they truly want um, and start being the creator of their life instead of sitting back anymore, you know, just to go for it. So now I am a dance and movement coach. Um, what really I like to help women transform their lives to step out more confidently. And I find it best to do with a combination of the, you know, changing the way you're thinking, but also changing the way you're connecting with yourself so that you can be more confident in who you are and in who you're showing up as in the world. Oh my gosh, I love that story. <laughs> and there's so many things yes. I want to ask you about. So yeah. go, go back, go back, go back. So like when you, what was the point in time? Like when you were talking about hiring a coach, what made you wanted to hire a coach and what pushed you forward into doing that? And what was the thing that you took away the most from that mm. coaching experience? Yeah, so it was a, I was, um, like I said, I had two little kids. I was working full time. 
And I was so stressed out. I felt like, you know, I have to do my career. I have to be the perfect mom. I have to like do the birthday parties. I have to like, you know, um, fit into my new family, right? Because I was still young in my marriage. And so there's all these like growing points and, and like new roles that I was in. And I was feeling like I was juggling so much. So I started listening to podcasts. I started like into some personal development and listening more and more to this one podcast, who is the coach that I eventually started working with. All the things that she was saying was just like, yeah, I, re I connected with it. And I, I could see, you know, she was in a place that I wanted to be at. Mm -hmm. So that's why I connected with her. And I'm so glad I did. Like, it was a really big jump for me. It was a huge investment as well, you know, um, to make that move. But I am so glad that I did. Because what I got out of that, I never, I got into it thinking, I just need some help. I don't want to be overwhelmed anymore. But what I got out of it was just completely shifting the way I was thinking and perceiving things in my life. Because honestly, everything else in my life stayed the same. I was still working full time. I still had two kids. In fact, I had a third kid. <laughs> um, you know, my husband still was expecting me to do things at home, right? I still had to manage all those things. But the shift happened internally in terms of how I was, um, you know, spending time on myself and caring for myself before I cared for everyone else. Um, in the way I was just recognizing my own emotions and how they played into my relationships and with my kids and my husband. And so I would say that was the biggest thing that I took away from coaching. And so externally, everything was the same, but internally I had changed and that made all the difference. Wow, that is so awesome. And that is mm -hmm. so true for what you said, like, it's the internal mindset and uh, mm -hmm. you pouring that love back to yourself, that attention mm -hmm. back to yourself. Um, tell me more about like, what were, what was the main thing that you did to, to yourself, like, um, that you realized about yourself that made such a big difference? Mm. What I realized is that I had always been living my life, not completely, but a lot of the times I was, you know, trying to be the good daughter, trying to be the good wife, trying to be the good mom, right? All these roles that I thought, you know, how I was supposed to be based on what other people were telling me. You know, so living my life based on other people's expectations or rules. I was a really good Asian kid. I honestly, like my parents said, you're the best child. Um, you listened and you did, you know, I, I did, I checked marked everything, right? <laughs> Career, university, marriage, like everything that my parents expected. And so that was the biggest shift is all of a sudden I realized like, I don't have to do that anymore. Now it's time for me to decide. And because it is my life, it's time to step up and just be really true to myself and start creating my own rules and my own ideals and my own values and living by those. And that is what's going to bring me the most happiness. Oh my gosh. And that is <laughs> what you said. It just like resonated with me just because mm -hmm. that perfectionism in me is like based on the expectation of what I think other people see in yes. me. It's not even, yes. like they may not even think that way, but I yes. think they think that way. Just have that <laughs> so much impact. And it's just like, oh, I can't do this. I have to do it this way. Like just every little mm -hmm. thing. And just now it's just like, who cares? Like no one really cares. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, and that is huge. That is huge. Okay, yeah. so let's go on about how it brought you into this movement coach, like this dance coaching. Mm -hmm. what, did, what are you trying to share with the world in this dance coaching? Yeah, so I grew up as a dancer. From seven years old and onwards, I danced. I was a dance teacher for 10 years. And then boom, I got married, I had kids, and I stopped. I stopped all of that. And so once I started back and once I started working with a coach, started shifting my mindset, 
started focusing back on me and she's like, hey, you love dance. Why don't you go do that again? And I did. And the moment I stepped back into the dance floor onto, in the dance studio and I started dancing, you're like, this is what I was missing. And I think as women, it, what I find is that, you know, as a mom, your body goes through all these changes. And what happens sometimes is that you start doing things for everyone else and you forget about yourself. And what, what you really need is to reconnect to your body because you have so much intuition in yourself that you just need to tap back into. And so with movement, I find it is, it is a great way to get you more present and aware of yourself and in your body, what you're feeling, even emotionally, right? Because um, when you're always go, 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 like doing things for other people, you lose touch with yourself so quickly and so easily because you're like, okay, I'll just, I'll deal with that later. I'll deal with my emotions later. I'll deal with how I'm feeling later. I'm hungry now, but I got to, you know, take care of the kids first and I'll do that later. But once you start moving again, you connect back to how you're feeling and you can recognize and be more self-aware. And so this is why I build my coaching practice around movement and mindfulness and, um, you know, changing your perspective and your thinking because it's a whole body experience. It's not just your thinking, it's your whole um, body and your sensations and your feelings that need to shift along. I love that. And that's mm -hmm. what um, I'm trying to get people to like when they watch these videos, it's mm -hmm. a time for yourself. Like you listening to these women talking about their stories. And that's just so that you can get back into yourself, like make you more mm -hmm. aware of what have been happening. And I totally agree with you in terms of once you're a mom, well, you know what, not even a mom, like as I think as women, maybe for mm -hmm. guys too, but a lot of times we just like take care of other things, like take care yes. of other people, take care of the family, take care of the work. And then the last thing is us. But then that's when we just like hit the pillow, like our head just hit the pillow. <laughs> and like, <Yeah>. well, <laughs> there's no time. So I'll ask a little bit more about how this body movement and going into your intuition and building your confidence mm -hmm. how does that go hand in hand I know like it it's kind of intuitive that it makes sense that when you move mm -hmm. your body you your intuition comes back but what exactly are you trying to get these women to do again yeah well part of it is building your confidence in um if you've lost touch with your own body and you don't even understand you know you you feel like separate from it you need to get back into it and getting um, understanding the sensations you're feeling, the emotions, knowing like what your strengths are, how your body is, what it's capable of doing. And so through movement and practice and challenging your body in different ways through dance, you can start being more confident in your abilities, physically, emotionally, mentally. And so that's why I incorporate so much movement into the coaching that I do is because it's, it's almost immediate. It's quicker almost sometimes than shifting your thinking. So it goes hand in hand, but the, the quicker you can get that kind of win and feel like, Oh, I'm making some progress and success. It can help you and encourage you to keep moving forward. And so that's what I love about movement. Mm. So tell us a little bit more about this posture and confidence, because I know you talk about that um, mm -hmm. movement and building that confidence in you. Um, share with us a little bit about that part. Mm -hmm. So growing up as a dancer, posture it was huge for me. And I didn't even realize it. And it's funny because my husband, um, I knew him in university. That's where we met. And he is he said the first few times he'd seen me and he'd seen me walking down the hallway he's like oh that girl knows what she's doing she's so confident and the funny thing is that I was not I I'm very like I said I'm very introverted very shy but it was this front I had it was the posture that I had that I carried myself with as a dancer I was always upright and um, striding confidently or looking like it because I had that training and the confidence in my body so what I would say to women is sometimes when you have more confidence in how you carry yourself, it leads other people to see you more confidently. And then you ultimately start acting like that more so because 
of your posture and the way you can hold yourself and the, uh, the way you carry yourself. I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. And also now that um, we're more in front of the computers and mm-hmm. a posture is bad <laughs> going in front of the computers or even just like working, right? Well, those yeah. of us who are working more. And would you be able to show with us one or two like movements that we can do to getting our posture back? Mm-hmm. Um, sure. One first thing you should do Take a nice deep breath in, because when you do this, it opens up the chest, brings the shoulders back up. And then when you breathe out, relaxing it and letting the shoulders fall down. And in that taking that deep breath, it gets your posture more upright. You're looking up, you drop the shoulders down and it relaxes you with your spine and a nicer alignment, you know, with the ears over your shoulders, over your hips. And that open position, there's been studies out there and people will talk about superwoman posture, right? It's open, it's big, it's confident. And so that breath really helps you open up the body and sit in more of that kind of posture. So that's one thing that you can do. The other thing I like is just doing kind of like the opposite of what you're doing when you're sitting at a desk, right? Everything we do is very forward. We're reaching with our arms, we're going forward, we're picking up our kids, we're reaching forward. So the opposite of that is really to bring your hands forward and open them up, open the shoulders, pull the shoulder blades back together, right? Nice wide, 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 wide stance. And you open up in the chest and you drop the arms down and it relaxes your shoulders back. And again, into that nice neutral alignment of your spine where your head is on top of your shoulders, on top of your hips, and you're looking upright and open and that can already make you feel more open and more confident in that posture. Oh, thank you so much, Wendy, for sharing those with us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you're welcome. We're coming to a close. I wish I can keep talking to you. <laughs> so <laughs> if there's one lesson you would like to share with other Asian women, what would mm-hmm. it be? It would be to step confidently into what you want. Just forget about everything you learned when you were little, everything your parents might have told you that you should do, other people telling you you should be like this, you should do this. Just forget it. It's time for you to tell yourself what you should and can do. It's not should anymore. It's just, I'm going to do that. That's what I want. And just go for it because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain from stepping into that because it's so beautiful on the other side for you to feel like I'm living my life, my life, my way. Perfect. That is so Mm -hmm. beautifully said. And that's what I want all women to do that too. And that is why I have this video (laughs) series just for everyone. That's wonderful that you're doing that. Thank you. And so for the viewers, I know you have a free gift for us. Would you be able to share that with us? Yeah. I have for the busy working mom, if you're feeling overwhelmed, stressed, five minutes, a really quick morning movement routine that you can do that will, you know, put the focus on you first. In the first five minutes, you get up. You can go through this routine. It'll help you transition from sleepy to wakefulness and being ready for whatever your day throws at you. So you can grab that free from my website at thewendying.com. I think Claudia will probably share that with you later and just grab that five minute movement routine, start it, make it your own. And if you want to let me know how it's going, I would love to hear from you. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm grabbing that for sure. (laughs) I need that. (laughs) Okay, thank you so much, Wendy, for your time and generosity Mm -hmm. for sharing your wisdom with us. It's so great talking to you. I hope we'll get to collaborate again soon. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Claudia.